Hey everyone, thank you for joining me for day 162 of our Bible in a Year Plus podcast. Today we're going to talk about the joys of being helpless. I know that sounds crazy, right? But it's true. David Ireland wrote a book uh, describing what it was like for him to have a, a crippling neurological disease that progressed and got worse and worse over time. While his wife was still pregnant, he wrote this letter to his baby, uh, knowing that maybe his baby wouldn't have any memories of him because you know he wouldn't uh, live long enough to make memories with his son. So he wrote this letter and here's what it said. Your mother is very special. Few men know what it's like to receive appreciation for taking their wives out for dinner, what it entails, what it does for us. It means that she has to dress me, shave me, brush my teeth, comb my hair, wheel me out of the house and down the steps, take the pedals off the chair, stand me up, sit me in the seat of the car, twist me around so I'm comfortable, fold the chair, put it in the car, go around the other side of the car, start it up, back it out, get out of the car, pull down the garage door, get back into the car and drive off to the restaurant. And then it starts all over again. We sit down to have dinner and she feeds me throughout the entire meal. And when it's over, she pays the bill, pushes the wheelchair out to the car, and again, reverses the same routine. And when it's over, finished, with real warmth, she'll say, Honey, thank you for taking me out to dinner. I never quite know what to answer. Ah, well, that's a good wife, right? But it also is an excellent illustration of how we are in the presence of God, the things we are trying to do when we are so disordered and disabled. And so today we pick up the story in Nehemiah chapter 11, verse 1 in the King James Version of the Bible with updated vocabulary. And the rulers of the people lived at Jerusalem. The rest of the people also cast lots to bring one out of every ten to live in Jerusalem, the holy city, and nine parts to dwell in other cities. And the people blessed all the men and willingly offered themselves to live at Jerusalem. Now, these are the chief of the province who lived in Jerusalem. But in the cities of Judah, everyone lived in his possession in their cities, that is, Israel, the priests, the Levites, the Nethanims, the children of Solomon's servants. And at Jerusalem resided certain of the children of Judah and of the children of Benjamin, of the children of Judah, Athiah, the son of Uzziah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Amariah, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Mahaliel, of the children of Perez, and Maaseiah, the son of Baruch, the son of Kolhoza, the son of Haziah, the son of Adiah, the son of Joyrib, the son of Zechariah, the son of Shaloni, and the sons of Perez that lived at Jerusalem were 468 valiant men. And these are the sons of Benjamin. Salu, the son of Meshulam, the son of Joed, the son of Padiah, the son of Coliah, the son of Maaseiah, the son of Ithiel, the son of Josiah, uh, and after him Gabai, Selai, 928. And Joel, the son of Zikri, was their overseer. And Judah, the son of Sanua, was second over the city. Of the priests, Jediah, the son of Jorib, Jachin, Sariah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Meroth, uh, the son of Ahitub, the ruler of the house of God, and their brothers who did the work of the house. These were 822. And Adiah, the son of Jehoram, the son of Peleliah, the son of Amzai, the son of Zechariah, the son of Pasher, the son of Melchiah, and his brothers, chief of the fathers, 242. And Amashai, the son of Azareel, the son of Ahasai, the son of Meshulamoth, the son of Immer, and their brothers, mighty men of valor, 128. And their overseer was Zabdiel, the son of one of the great men. Also the Levites, Shemaiah, the son of Hashub, the son of Azraikam, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Bunai, the son of Shebathai, and Josabad, of the chief of the Levites, they had oversight over the outward business of the house of God. And Mataniah, the son of Micah, the son of Zabdi, the son of Asaph, was the principal to begin the thanksgiving and prayer. And Bakbukiah, the second among his brothers, and Abda, the son of Shamua, the son of of Galel, the son of Jeduthun, all the Levites in the holy city were 284. Moreover, the gatekeepers, Icub, Talman, and their brothers that kept the gates, they were 172. 
And the residue of Israel, of the priests and the Levites, were in all the cities of Judah, everyone in his inheritance. But the Nethanims resided in Ophel. And Ziha and Gizpah were over the Nethanims. The overseer also of the Levites at Jerusalem was Uzai, the son of Bani, the son of Hashabai, the son of Madaniah, the son of Micah. Of the sons of Asaph, the singers were over the business of the house of God. For it was the king's commandment concerning them that a certain portion should be for the singers due every day. And Pethahiah, the son of Meshezbiel, of the children of Zerah, the son of Judah, was at the king's hand in all matters concerning the people. And for the villages with their fields, some of the children of Judah dwelt at Kerjath Arba and in the villages of it, at Dibon and the villages of it, and Jacabziel in the villages of it, and Jeshua and Molada and Beth Felet, and at Hazar Shewel and Beersheba and in the villages of these, and at Ziklag and Melkona and in the villages of it, and at Enrimen and Zariah and Jarmuth, Zenoa, Adullam, and in their villages, at Lachish and the fields of it, and Azekah in the villages of that, and they lived from Beersheba into the valley of Hinnom. The children also of Benjamin from Geba lived at Michmash and Ijah, Bethel, and in their villages, and at Anatoth, Nob, Ananiah, Hazor, Ramah, Gideam, Hadad, Zeboim, Nebalot, Lod, and Ono, the Valley of Craftsmen, and of the Levites were divisions in Judah and in Benjamin. Chapter 12. Now, these are the priests and Levites that went up with Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, Sariah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Maluk, Hattush, Shechaniah, Reham, Merimoth, Idu, uh, Genotho, uh, Abijah, Mia'em, Maadiah, Bilga, Shemaiah, and Jairib, Jediah, Salu, Amok, Hilkiah, Jediah. These were the chief of the priests and of their brothers in the days of Jeshua. Moreover, the Levites, Joshua, Benui, Cadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, Mataniah, which was over the thanksgiving, he and his brothers. Also, Bakbukiah and Unai, their brothers, were across from them in the watches, and Joshua fathered Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim also fathered Eliashib, and Eliashib fathered Joida, and Joida fathered Jonathan, and Jonathan fathered Jadua. And in the days of Jehoiakim were priests, the chief of the fathers of Sariah, Mariah, of Jeremiah, Hananiah, of Ezra, Meshulam, of Amariah, Jehonahan, of Malaiku, Jonathan, of Shebaniah, Joseph, of Haram, Adna, of Marioth, Helkiah, of Idu, Zechariah, of Genethon, Meshulam, of Abijah, Zikri, of Mineam, of Madoa, Pidei, of Bilga, Shamua, of Shamua, Jonathan, of Joyreb, Matani, of Jediah, Uzai, of Saliah, Keliah, of Amok, Ember, of Hilkiah, Hashabiah, of Jediah, Nathaniel. The Levites in the days of Eliashib, Joida, and Johanan, and Jedua were recorded chief of the fathers, also the priests to the reign of Darius the Persian. The sons of Levi, the chief of the fathers, were written in the book of the Chronicles even until the days of Johanan, the son of Eliashib. And the chief of the Levites, Hashabiah, Jerobiah, and Jeshua, the son of Cadmiel, with their brothers across from them to praise and to give thanks according to the commandment of David, the man of God, ward by ward. Madaniah and Bakbukiah, Obadiah, Meshulam, Talman, Echo, were gatekeepers, keeping the watch at the thresholds of the gates. These were in the days of Joachim, the son of Jeshua, the son of Josedek, and in the days of Nehemiah, the governor, and Ezra, the priest, the scribe. And at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out of all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to keep the dedication with gladness, both with thanksgiving and with singing, with cymbals, psalteries, and with harps. And the sons of the singers gathered themselves together, both out of the plain country all around Jerusalem and from the villages of Nephoth Athai, also from the house of Gilgal and out of the fields of Geba and Asmaveth, for the singers had built villages all around Jerusalem. And the priests and the Levites purified themselves and purified the people and the gates and the wall. Then I brought up the princes of Judah upon the wall and appointed two great companies of them 
to give thanks on it, uh, one went on the right hand upon the wall toward the dung gate, and after them went Hoshea and half the princes of Judah, and Azariah, Ezra, and Meshulam, Judah, and Benjamin, and Shemaiah, and Jeremiah. And certain of the priests, sons with trumpets, namely Zechariah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Madaniah, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zachar, the son of Asaph, and his brothers, Shemaiah, and Azrael, and Melilai, and Gilali, and Maai, and Nathaniel, and Judah, Hanani, with the musical instruments of David, the man of God, and Ezra the scribe before them. And at the fountain gate, which was across from them, they went up by the stairs of the city of David at the ascent of the wall above the house of David, even unto the water gate eastward. And the other company of them who gave thanks went across from them, and I after them, and the half of the people upon the wall from beyond the tower of the furnaces, even unto the broad wall, and from above the gate of Ephraim, and above the old gate, and above the fish gate, and the tower of Haniel, and the tower of Mia, even unto the sheep gate, and they stood still in the prison gate. So the two companies of those who gave thanks in the house of God stood, and I and the half of the rulers with me, and the priests, Eliakim, Masaiah, Miniamin, Micaiah, Eloani, Zechariah, and Hananiah with trumpets, and Maaseiah, and Shemaiah, and Eliezer, and Uzai, and Jehonan, and Malchijah, and Elam, and Ezer. And the singers sang loud with Jezrahiah, their overseer. Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard far off. And at that same time, some were appointed over the chambers for the treasures, for the offerings, for the first fruits, for the tithes, to gather unto them out of the fields of the cities the portions of the law for the priests and Levites, for Judah rejoiced for the priests and the Levites that served. And both the singers and gatekeepers kept the watch of their God and the watch of the purification according to the commandment of David and of Solomon his son. For in the days of David and Asaph of old, there were chief of the singers and songs of praise and thanksgiving unto God. And all Israel in the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah gave portions to the singers and the gatekeepers every day as portion, and they sanctified holy things unto the Levites, and the Levites sanctified them unto the children of Aaron. And that concludes Nehemiah chapter 12. All right, so here we see that we have another catalog of individuals who settled in Jerusalem. So the walls were done, but not very many people lived there. So the idea was that one out of every 10 of the people who had returned from captivity would set up a house in Jerusalem, and that way Jerusalem would be occupied and it would be safe. They would have walls and they have people inside the walls to protect the city. And then everybody else could live outside in their natural inheritance that they had uh, received even from the time of um, the dividing of the property when Joshua uh, was in charge of the nation. All right, so uh, before we talk any more about that catalog of names, let me just remind you that we have just finished chapter 12, and pretty soon, tomorrow, we'll go into chapter 13. And as we turn the corner toward chapter 13, we will finish these short prayers that Nehemiah has prayed. And uh, what's so important about this is that from start to finish, Nehemiah has expressed his dependence upon God. So he has one long prayer, right? And then nine short prayers. And all these nine short prayers keep saying things like, strengthen me, Lord. Remember me, Lord. You know, sympathy for us, Lord. And and he keeps praying these brief prayers. And he shows his total dependence on God. And I love that. Um, In um, Ali Halsby's book on prayer, he describes prayer as basically being an opportunity for us to express our dependence on God, our actual helplessness on God. So here's how he says it. And you remember, Nehemiah is completely aware of his helplessness and dependence on God, right? So here's what uh, Ali Halsby says. Prayer and helplessness are inseparable. Only he who is helpless can truly pray. Your helplessness is your best prayer. Prayer, therefore consists simply in telling God day by day in what ways we feel that we are helpless. That is so good. That is so right. Um, This past week, 
uh, there were two times that come to my mind and, you know, it hurts me to think of them. Uh, one time I said something that was just awkward. I, I uh, was sort of uh, teasing a little bit. And I just said something that was awkward and might have hurt somebody's feelings. I hate that I did that. Then the second time, only a couple days ago, the same thing happened. I said something and it would have been appropriate in a hundred other situations, but there was somebody there, uh, two individuals there, whose feelings might have been hurt by that, who, who might have found that to be awkward and uncomfortable. And I hate that I did that. We realize that we are so helpless. You know, we're trying to be cheerful. We're, we're, we're trying to, to lift people and elevate people. And then we say the wrong thing and we just hate when we do that. We are helpless. As Nehemiah taught us in his brief arrows to heaven prayers, we are so dependent on God. If the Lord doesn't help us, then we are ugly and awkward and so resistible and so uncharming. The Lord has to help us with everything in life or we just fail. And I love uh, Ali Halsby's book because he, he calls this dependence helplessness. And he basically says, as, as that one quote says, Prayer, therefore, consists simply in telling God day by day in what ways we feel that we are helpless. And that's what Nehemiah was doing. And that, that's why this project is going to be dedicated as we go on today and we talk about the dedication of the wall. It worked because Nehemiah says, Lord, I'm helpless and I just need you. And so he has these arrows to heaven prayer that describe the, the heart helplessness that he feels. And I just love that. Uh, you see in chapter 11, verses 1 through 24, this roster of people who settle in Jerusalem. So we think at this time, there might have been something like 5,000 or 8,000 people living in Jerusalem uh, after they rebuilt the walls. Uh, you see that um, there is the repetition again of the uh, important priests and Levites who came 92 years earlier with Shesh Bazar in uh, 537 BC. And so once again, the important fellows that the priests and the Levites are accounted for. Uh, and then we see in chapter 12, verses 27 through 47, the dedication ceremony for the wall project. And we love this. In verse 31, uh, we have this, that, that there are these two great companies and they are actually on the wall. So remember the wall is eight feet wide, 40 feet high, and so you can put a lot of people on there, and it's two and a half miles around. And evidently, they had two parades of uh, Levites, singers, and musicians, and they go on the wall, and they march all the way around until they meet again at the temple. And at the temple, then, they have their dedication ceremony. And what's so great is that we have basically a crowd of people on this wall. And remember, in chapter 4, verse 3, there was the taunt. The taunt was, if even a fox got on that wall, it would knock the wall right down. And of course, now we have an entire crowd of Levites on the wall, and the wall does not fall down. People taunt and say, hey, you're helpless. You're not going to be able to do it. But it's our helplessness that makes us able to do it. And because Nehemiah was helpless, they finished that project. Same with you. Someone says, you can never accomplish your high calling in Christ. Oh, yes, you can, as long as you are helpless enough. And so what should be our great life lesson today? Total dependence on God. Like the fellow we described at the beginning of the episode, David Ireland, whose wife had to help him with everything. We are in God's presence like that. He has to help us with everything. He has to prop us up. He has to make us able because we are helpless. But the Lord does prop us up so that we can live in the first place, so that we can have emotional wellness, enough emotional wellness to do everything He wants us to do. So we have enough money. So we have enough ability to be kind and to build people up and enough ability to fight off those who would deceive us or our loved ones. And so the Lord does help the helpless. We are helpless. And as long as we're helpless enough, the Lord will fulfill his high calling in us. And so how about if right now in our prayer, we confess our utter dependence, our total helplessness, and trust the Lord to prop us up today. I hope you pray in your heart as I pray out loud, okay? Father God, we ask that you will indeed prop us up another day today. We would like to confess our helplessness. Uh, we are confessing in which ways we are helpless. We're not smart, we're not strong, we're not charming, we're not able to fulfill our high calling, Lord, unless you make it so. And we believe that you will, because this is your work. 
And we pray for that today and always in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, okay. God bless you. Thank you for joining me for day 162 of our Bible in a Year Plus podcast. And I sure hope I get to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.